nights, hot dice, and endless nights. If you like the glitter of show business, gambling, and everything you never see at home, then you'll love this town. And if you're in show business, headlining in Las Vegas is having arrived big. But who is top dog in Las Vegas? Who packs them in night after night? Was it Elvis? Is it Frank Sinatra? Johnny Carson? Well, the answer will surprise you, because, ladies and gentlemen, it's... The Midnight Idol, Wayne Newton! I can see clearly now the rain has gone And I can see all obstacles in my way And gone are the dark clouds, baby, and used to help me fly It's gonna be a man this is the Wayne Newton you probably remember, the chubby perennial adolescent with the falsetto voice. Actually, he was 21 when he appeared on this Jackie Gleason show in 1964. That very man, now 37, is the highest paid performer in the history of show business. In a town of big winners and losers, no one rolls higher than Wayne Newton. Let's do some rock and roll, $1 million every month, and to his employers, he's worth every dime. For while most stars play Las Vegas for only a few weeks a year, Newton draws so well that he plays an incredible 36 weeks a year, two shows a night, every night of the week. That's all right with you. That's all right, Mo. Bear me any way you do. That's all right. That's all right. For the past eight years, there's never been one empty seat at a Wayne Newton show. Tom, I don't think there's any greater feeling in the world than to be on those boards and have that many people direct that much energy toward you. You can feel it. Uh, you feel it. Uh, you could cut it with a knife. There's no greater high in the world than receiving that kind of reaction from an audience. The reaction is great, but why? Newton is an astonishingly versatile entertainer. He's also a comedian. His show makes capital of his musical virtuosity. He plays 13 instruments. He gives all of his massive talents all of the time. I want to give him as much as I can give him, and I guarantee you'll find people that walk out of the showroom and say, I did not enjoy Wayne Newton, but you will never hear someone say he didn't work hard for us. A mild understatement. He is a workaholic who loves performing so much that he once tried to sing while suffering from food poisoning. He had to be carried off the stage on a stretcher. Most big-name performers give Pat 45-minute to one-hour shows. Newton gives it his all in a show which often runs one or two hours longer than it's supposed to. He leaves every audience feeling it's gotten its money's worth. Perhaps that kind of dedication further explains Wayne Newton's domination of Las Vegas. It's 9.30 in the morning at the casino at the Frontier Inn. Not many people, not much action, except in one place. And that's the line which has been waiting here since 7 in the morning to make reservations for this evening's Wayne Newton show. Old Vegas hand, Hank Greenspun, publisher of the Las Vegas Sun, has seen a lot of acts come and go. The cab drivers will tell you that when the visitor gets off at the airport, the first place, first question is, where's Wayne Newton playing? Las Vegas is Wayne Newton's town. He's been performing here for most of his professional career. 
This town offers whatever a person needs. It's the adult Disneyland. As far as entertainment, it's unequaled in the world. It may be Disneyland to most of us, but to Wayne Newton, it's his own Nirvana, a 52-acre ranch right in Las Vegas with a southern-style mansion he helped to design. Can I have a kiss? <laughs> he lives here with his Japanese wife and three-year-old daughter. He doesn't drink or gamble. Instead, he has two passions, other than his work and family, his Bell helicopter and his champion Arabian horses. It wasn't always this way. Before there were the fancy cars, the diamond rings, the horses and the helicopter, there was the rejection and the hurt from cruel jokes about his being cast forever as a cutesy, ridiculous boy soprano. Wayne was born into the modest Norfolk, Virginia household of his half-American Indian parents in 1942. And at four, Wayne was taken to see Hank Williams at the Grand Old Opry, and an impressionable young boy was hooked. At six, Wayne and his brother Jerry had their own radio program. At 16, Wayne and Jerry moved to Las Vegas to work in the lounge of the Fremont Hotel. They played there for five years, working six shows a night, six nights a week. Unbelievable for their age. Playing the lounges gave Wayne the opportunity to see and be seen by the stars headlining the big rooms. That's how Wayne got his first big break. While appearing in a lounge, the late Bobby Darren saw him perform. When I met Bobby and he became interested in my career, He's the one who picked Don Shane, Red Roses, all those songs that became hits for me. Wrap up some red roses for a blue. Audience, I'd like to repeat it right Jack on. Benny gave him his first opportunity to open in one of the big rooms in Nevada. Whenever I wasn't on stage myself, I'd always stand on the wings and I'd watch you. The way you move your hands and mm. the way you walk. Well, walk. Well, you know, strangely enough that you should mention that because uh, a lot of people have worked with me and stole my mannerism, you see, but you, but you didn't. With my voice, I wouldn't dare. You took an awful lot of criticism, ridicule. But tell me about that period. Well, Johnny Carson was constantly uh, maligning me on television, uh, laughing. I was the brunt of every show that they did. Um, most of the jokes were pointed at, at my masculinity, or in their opinion, lack of. They just made me that much more determined. Finally, it was all too much, and Wayne confronted one of his detractors, Johnny Carson. And I walked in his office, and I asked his producer to excuse us, and I closed the door and I said, I don't know what your problem is with me. I don't know what food I've taken out of your mouth or what child I've killed of yours or what it is that I've done to you. But whatever it is, the jokes have got to stop and whatever your problem here is, I'm here to hear about it. Whatever I've done to you, here I am, tell me. Just like that? Just like that. And of course he started mumbling and said, oh no, I'm a big fan of yours, Wayne, and, and all the crap, you know, all the things I'm sure he thought that I wanted to hear. And so we continued to talk for another two or three minutes, him assuring me that that was not his feeling and so on and so forth. And, and I left, and that was the end of the jokes about Wayne Newton on The Tonight Show. Nobody makes jokes about him anymore, because the old Wayne Newton no longer exists. This is the new Wayne Newton, rich, powerful, strutting, sexy. But back in 1969, his old image was nearly destroying him. Near bankruptcy, he turned to his old friend, former banker Jay Stream, for help. Stream has managed him ever since. I told him I thought one of his problems was his, was his image. At 28, he was still trying to be 14. He said, uh, well, what are you going to be when you grow up? 
I said, I'm sorry? Well, you could be a bartender, or uh, you could be a sumo wrestler. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, if you're going to be an entertainer, don't you think you should start to look like it? So I went home, and I, within three months, I lost 60 pounds. I asked his conductor, I said, does he really have a three-octave range? And his conductor said he did. I said, well, why then is he singing in the highest of them? When we actually went in, in a day and dropped a full octave, then he came out, we went into uh, the recording studios, he did Daddy Don't You Walk So Fast, would push him back, put him back on the charts for the first time in several years. Daddy, don't you walk so fast. Daddy, slow down song, cause you're making me wrong. His hair, as you probably remember, was done in a wacky wave. It uh, was combed back and he looked like he had just taken a shower looking straight up and we put a little more mod into uh, his hairdo. For the first time in a decade since Daddy, Wayne has a new record climbing the charts. It's called Years. I think Wayne Newton represents something today that no one else does. You have Frank Sinatra, who was the first swooner, and, and you have Bing Crosby, the first crooner, and you have the Beatles with the first weird sound, and you had uh, Elvis with the rock and roll. Uh, what was left for Wayne? What, what is he going to be the king of? Well, Las Vegas is the Broadway of personal appearance. What better role to play than the king of the top? And so we put him in this long strip castle and made him the king of this. That's what we wanted him to be. Cut it loose, man. No, I didn't love the little boy I was, nor do I necessarily love the man that I am. It's been necessary to go through that kind of hurt. We never learn anything from the good things that happen to us in life. Sing it, man. 